Okay, so now we're going to show you how to do some indirect ophthalmoscopy with a Volk lens. So all we need is a Volk lens here and a slit lamp. So the first thing we'll do is just set the patient up. So bring the slit lamp round. Just check the height for him. How's the height for you there, Sean? Yeah, okay. Okay, well, that's great. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is just set up and make sure that the illumination system, the viewing system, directly in line with each other like this. And what you want to do is just bring it just over, it's over the patient's eye. Have a look in, make sure it's in focus and just look for the red reflex through the pupil. You say just make sure that beam's just right in front of the pupil. Then you can use your volt box for a bit of support for your elbow. Then just bring the volk up just to the appropriate focal length. Just make sure and just look at the side and just make sure the light reflex you see is just directly over the pupil. Have a look through, you should be able to see the red reflex. And just slowly start to push back until it comes into focus. So here's a view through the slit lamp when I'm setting up the Volk. So as I'll show you again, we just want to bring the lens in front of the eye. It's the 90 day opto we're using. And just look for that red reflex. You should see that come into, fo come into focus. And then if you pull back, you can just bring the disc into focus. So here we have the disc in focus here. You can easily switch between the disc and macula just by moving the slit lamp. So if we move it across, you'll be able to see we're on the disc, and there's the macula. And back to the disc. And if you're unsure, we'll show you that again just so you can see. So we're at the disc. If you move the slit lamp, you can quickly move from over to the macula. And there's the disc again. So now we'll assess the disc in higher magnification. So now that we have the disc in a higher magnification, we can examine it in greater detail. The first thing we're going to look at is the disc margins. And then we want to make sure that the entirety of the margin is well defined and there's no blurring. And that's what we have here. You can also note the colour and the shape. We'll have a look at the cup to disc ratio. So in Sean's case here, that's sitting at about 0 0.25. We'll also look at the neural retinal rim. And you want to make sure that that follows the isn't rule. So if it follows it isn't real, you would record that as isn't positive. And if it didn't follow it, you would record that as isn't negative. So once the disc and the macula have been examined, you want to examine the peripheral areas of the fundus. You can ask the patient to look down, as you see here on the footage, and have a sweep across checking for even flat pigmentation and the absence of any lesions. This should be repeated in the other seven positions of gaze.